Welcome back everyone to Machine Organization and Programming. This is the fourth lecture in my sequence on the pointer array equivalents. In this lecture we're going to be taking a look at how array access really works. Um, we've already talked about pointers and arrays and how they're stored in memory. We talked about pointers to arrays. And now we're going to take a look at the arithmetic that the compiler has to do to figure out where in memory a particular array element is stored. And again, this is a continuation from the last lecture. So forgive the abrupt introduction. I want to talk a little bit about how does array access really work? What's going on inside of the machine now? So in all of the other computer science classes that we teach, ARR just, uh, we give it uh, the bracket notation three. This just gives us the third element of an array. So, but on the inside of the machine, what's really going on is that this uh, ARR three is actually being translated to the base address of the array. I've got that right here, um, right here, element zero. Uh, that address is going to be offset by, I'm clicking the wrong spot, there we go, plus three, because it's three. But I also need to know the size of whatever these things are. Three times size of int. All right, and that means that error three is going to be equal to, let's see here, error is equal to, OXEF0 plus 3 times 4. That's equal to 12 bytes plus EF0. That's going to be, what is it? OXEFC. Yeah, okay. So that's how we're going to, um, inside the machine, get to that particular element. Now I need one more thing because this is an address, and this doesn't actually, you know, this much doesn't give me an address, it gives me the actual value. So I need to dereference the memory address. So that's going to be the dereference operator like that. So I need the star operating on this entire address after I compute it, operating on this much. And again, I throw a star in right there to dereference it, or a star like that, something like that. So star to dereference to go get that value. I'll Cool. So the next thing, we don't actually need to type that as programmers. Instead, um, the compiler is going to take care of knowing the size of whatever the data type is. So we don't need to type size of int in order to move from one element to another, uh, or accessing arrays. Instead, what we're going to be doing is, uh, let's see here, ARR3 is going to be equal to just um, dereference address error plus three. So this should work just fine to go give me the value at uh, index three of my array. Um, and the size of, uh, wrong screen, size of is taken by the compiler because it already knows what type it is. Just makes it a little easier for us and it makes our code a little more portable. If we go from a four um, byte integer machine to something that uses two bytes for the integer. Uh, we don't want to have to worry about changing the size of an integer anywhere in the code. So I mean size of is great, but it's a lot of extra typing when the compiler already knows that's what we mean. All right, um, in, in general, let me just put this, we're also going to have error of i is just going to be equal to, uh, gets translated to size event like that, or we type and lost a parenthesis right there. Okay, so this bottom version right here, let me move this up a little bit. There we go. This bottom version that we type, uh, this is the array access, uh, bracket notation, array, what did I call it before? Oh, I'm blanking on the name. It's getting late. Uh, array bracket, no array index notation, something like that. Array index notation, that feels good. And this is going to be the pointer notation version. As the compiler runs, we're going to see in the middle section of the course uh, that all of the assembly language uses uh, this notation right here and not the bracket notation over there. Okay, um, let me pull up my next example and I'll be right back. All right, I decided my next example is to actually show you that this actually works. Um, even though I just claimed that 
using a pointer notation was difficult because we couldn't change the array. This is not changing the array. This is computing an address and dereferencing a new address. Nowhere am I assigning to the array. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and come back over here and just grab something that prints out a line. I'll make a copy of that. Here we'll print, um, let's go with ARR of 3. That's what I just did. And we will print that out not using ARR of 3, but instead we'll use dereference, the address of the array, plus 3, just like that. Save that. Yeah, clear the screen. We'll compile. And we'll run this. There we go. Indexing the array using that pointer notation. Ah, oh, you know what else is kind of fun? Don't ever do this, please. This uh, it, it works. It's not technically against the rules, but what the compiler is doing is it's doing addition. It's grabbing an array element right here, that way, and an address right there, and adding something to it. This is just addition. And if you are doing addition, you can also write um, this is actually equal to i plus arr. Right? I can put the addition in any order I want. That's the commutative property of addition. And what that means is that I can also rewrite this one more way here. Instead of printing it out with this notation, I can also do three with the array in the brackets. So it's this with the three and the array switch. So the three is outside the brackets. This will work just fine also. Um, as a programmer, though, nobody expects to see it like this. It's confusing. It's hard to read. Uh, no one recognizes it. But just this is the one course where someone might demo this. So there it is. It works. There's no compiler error. This, believe it or not, is not against the rules of C. All right. Please don't ever write code that does that. Uh, you'll just confuse me. Uh, this is the only day of the year that I ever even remember that this works. And I'm lucky that I did. Uh, all right, now I'm going to go set up my next example. I'll be right back.